love like the back of your hand, especially Miss Dorothy. God's amazing grace sent down from heaven rescued me from sin and from shame. Just to know I have Jesus with me. He is keeping me from sin and from strife. He delivered me from condemnation. Now I have. such a good song and I've already won the war. This old world's a battlefield where we must fight each day to overcome the evil one and send him on his way our commander is almighty god and there's no greater near or far i may lose a battle now and then but i And all alone And think that no one cares When the daily task of getting by Has caused you to despair Just 
Just take God's word into your heart and on his promise stand. You may lose a battle now and then, but the victory is in God's hands. You can have this confidence that helps to see. promise that it's easy, but salvation's worth some scars. I may lose a battle now and then, but I've already won. The victory's mine. I've already won. Oh. song right there. I'm telling you what, uh, there's a song they sing called He's So Good to Me. I like this one too. Oh sweet Jesus, my Lord and Savior, in this life of mine that I cause me to see how I love him, I adore him. And he's so good to me There stands a mother. 
Door to heaven, my home in the sky. The fountain of living water that never shall run dry. But the angel called him We're going to sing a few choruses back to back, three of them, 178, 173, and 28. If you want to turn to 178, hold your place at 28. It might help us to get there quicker. 178, then 173 and 28. Oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus. His name is wonderful, and there's something about that name. So we'll sing those three choruses in a row. And then we have a special. Brother Wade, who is our special? Are there, our, our family singing special again? Okay, good deal. All right. 178, oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus. <clears throat> Oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus, oh, what he means to me. He lifts me up when I've fallen down, he brings a smile in place of a frown. Oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus, I am so glad he came, never promise to all who believe his name. Let's sing it again. Oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus. Oh, what he means to me. He lifts me up when I've fallen down. He brings a smile in place of a frown. Oh, what a wonderful friend is Jesus. I am so glad he came. Never alone is his promise to all who believe his name. Page 173, 173. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name.
something about that name. Number 28. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master,
Amen. Thank you for that. Appreciate y'all being here with us tonight. I wasn't around when that song was written, but I wish I wrote that. Amen. The love of God. All of the verses, all of the, the chorus, God's love is measureless. We're going to talk about that tonight. 1 John chapter 4 is where we'll start. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. The love of God. The world, Satan, since, since the beginning, he's been about to corrupt God's creation. Amen. Everything about God. And uh, in the world has taken on different interpretations of love. And so we can fall susceptible to some of those beliefs if we're not careful. But here's what, here's what uh, John writes, chapter 4, verse number 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God and dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him, because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Remember what we talked about this morning with Moses, and remember how Moses wrote the law. And there were more than ten commandments. Moses wrote down how to live. Live this life do these things, and be blessed. But Jesus said we could sum it all up in two things, two, two different statements. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. If you follow both of those, you won't break any of his commandments. And John is talking about the love of God. The love of God. What is God's love in picture? And a lot of things in the world today have come to mean different things. I don't like to see. I don't like to see the design of a rainbow on things because the world has corrupted what God has taken that to be, and that's sad. I like the real rainbows, but I, I get a little scared when I see something with a rainbow on it. There are other things. The world would tell you what 
what love is, this is love. But the real picture of love here is that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. Romans chapter 5, he tells us, Romans chapter 5, Verse number six, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us because God commendeth his love toward us. At our worst, at our very worst, he loved us. Even at our very best, we don't deserve it. The best we could offer is filthy rags. So much of what is talked about with God's love so much about what God spends his time trying to teach us about with his love is he says let me let me show you or let me tell you again how I showed you that I love you and this cross represents that now did someone here make that cross who Brother Billy? Rick. All right. He made that cross. Somebody made it. <laughs> I've seen different designs. I've seen uh, more formal. I've seen um, cleaner cuts. And I don't mean I don't mean this to be offensive, but it's kind of uh it's kind of ugly but i like it because of what it represents jesus cross was ugly and those crown of thorns were ugly it wasn't a perfect it wasn't something perfect that he hung on i like to see it i like the design, however he came up with that, or if y'all drew that up, or how it came about, it represents God's love. God's love is that he gave us a way of escape, and it cost him. It was terrible. It was awful. And I don't know, I don't know how they, how they got him down. After he had passed away, he hung there and died. Did they leave the nails in the cross and pull him off? How did it happen? I know that none of his friends helped him. He was by himself. His father even turned and looked away. The angels probably wanted to help him. But the only thing that kept him, the only thing that, that made him leave his arms stretched out so that they could drive the nails in wasn't because he was weak. Wasn't because he couldn't pick himself up. The things that he endured physically as a man, he was strong. Jesus was strong. Jesus was not weak. Jesus was not feminine. And there's nothing wrong with men being masculine and ladies being feminine. Don't let the world tell you anything different. God created you to be who he wants you to be, what you are. Jesus was so strong and his love was so strong that he allowed this to happen. He let it happen. It was it was his plan and his design for it to happen. And so often he tells us, 
for God so loved, but God commendeth his love. And in each of those, he says that God sent his only begotten son. That's the perfect picture of love. That's what love is. There's no, and when he says God is love, God is love, that means that his love possesses no boundaries. God is powerful, all powerful. It's forever. The love of God shall endure for forever. God's love is as God is. So, we can't forget, and maybe sometimes we think, or others think, why do they always talk about the cross? Because without the shedding of his blood, there will be no remission, no payment, for our sins. We owe a great deal to him. We always should sing. Of his love for us. We always should talk. Of his love for us. And we ought to love others. He says. Love your brother. If you love God. Love your fellow church members. Why? Do, because they deserve it. They don't always deserve it. Now, Jesus and God, God the Father, God the Son, they didn't just agree with everything. That's also not love. Today you have to, you have to uh, take someone's sin and they say, well, if you don't agree with this, you hate us, which isn't true. Just like my dad, probably your dad, my mom, even my grandma, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my wife, all love me. But if I do something wrong, uh, depending on what it is, sometimes I have consequences. <laughs> sometimes they, they don't, they're not going to say, well, that's okay because we love you. That's fine. We love you. That's not what love is. Uh, my dad had a different way of showing his love when I did something wrong. This is because I love you. My mom, I, I've told you this, and I'll always talk about it because I still think it's funny. I didn't think it was funny at the time. But she had a little paddle that we won at Vacation Bible School that said, Jesus loves you. And she loved to give us spankings with that. That's contradictive to me. I don't know. Heresy. <laughs> Jesus loves you. They love me. He loves me. But that doesn't mean we can just do whatever we want. Because whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Someone that cares for you is not going to let you, allow you, wreck your life and live it carelessly. We step in and we say, hey, you're doing, that's wrong. So love is, love is not you have to accept everything that I do. That's what the world wants you to think. Hey, you take, I want to do all of these things, and then you, you take it. Otherwise, you hate me. No. But God is clear in his word how we ought to live, what we ought to do. And those of us that, that he loves, those of us that have accepted what he did for us, we should live our life to show others that same love through us. Because he loves me, I love you. Because we love, then we point, sometimes, we point them in the right direction. We try to steer them to the right path. We try to help them along the way. No, you're wrong. But here's what else it says, Romans chapter 8, about God's love. Verse number 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the key that pulls us and God together. Because I was God's enemy. You were God's enemy. We were all bound for hell. 
But Jesus came in between. Jesus brought us together. Once I accepted him, once you accept him, he pulls us together. No longer God's enemy. God loves me. God cares for me, and there's nothing that can pull me from God's love. Nothing can take me from God's love. In 1 John, we read, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I don't have to fear what my end will be. I don't have to fear what's coming after death because the love of God says he saved me. The love of God is Jesus. Jesus Christ in his work on the cross. I've accepted that. Some people think we said at the beginning, some people think we talk about it maybe too much. Is that all you talk about? It's really the most important thing, right? The cross is an important thing. It may be, it may be something horrible, awful, ugly. But without it, where would we be? Without God's love, what would our next step be? What would happen to us if, if we passed away? Without God's love, we would have nothing. We would have no reason to live, no hope. We would live in fear. And because I have that love in me, I should share that love with others. Because God loves me, I love others. I want to share that with them. The greatest commandment is to love God, to love others as we love ourselves. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to meet together again this evening. And Lord, we pray that you would bless the singing that we've heard, Lord, the testimonies, and Lord, uh, your word. May we never get over your work on the cross and the love that you have for us in sending your son. Lord, and I pray that uh, if there's someone here or someone that we know that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, I pray that we would continue to share with them, to, uh, to tell them, to keep praying for them, Lord, that they would accept you as Savior before too late. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.